Welcome back golfers. We are at Dairy Creek Golf Course, my new home for teaching. And today we're gonna to talk about how to stop flipping in your golf swing. Stay tuned. So Dairy Creek Golf Course is in San Luis Obispo, California. The golf course has a beautiful practice area with a driving range, a couple chipping greens, putting green. It also has a top tracer driving range that is really cool at night where it lights up and glows. And it's also the home of Cal Poly. And right now we're standing on the Tom Lehman practice area. And today that's where we're gonna talk about flipping in the golf swing. And flipping something that I've struggled with in my golf swing, um, it typically happens a lot if you are right hand dominant. You jump off your left leg. And the reason that is is because flipping, we've talked about casting in the past, and casting is releasing the club from the top. Now, flipping's a little different because you can get a perfect transition from the top and drive that lower body like we've talked about all the way down. But if the club face is too vertical, lead edge is too vertical here, then you're gonna, your body's gonna wanna slow down your lower body and you're gonna release those hands heavily going through. So you'll see that is a nice, good transition. You'll come down into this position and then you'll see a lot of hand release coming through just because your body's telling your brain I need to square up that face because if I kept moving through, it'll leave the face open and you'll hit everything to the right. So today we're going to talk about the causes of flipping, how to fix it, and, and I'm going to give you some drills to make it easier to incorporate the, the aspects of how to fix it into your golf swing. Now, when we get into flipping, it's more a cause and effect. The cause is the face is at is too vertical or even open at toe up position on the downswing. The effect is your hands have to flip to close down that face quickly. And when we do that, we typically see the right side or the trail side of our body stop and then you, you won't see that heel raise until maybe you get to about this position, then the, the trail foot starts to, to fire going through and the heel starts coming up. And the reason why that is, is we're trying to slow down our lower body in order for our hands to move faster and release harder so that face can square up. Now, how do we fix that? That's the, that's the question for the day. How do we fix the flip? So the first thing we can do to fix the flip is check our grip. Make sure our grip is not too weak, you know, both left hand and right, because if it's weak in the left hand, the left hand or the lead hand is really gonna control what the face is doing through impact. And then if, if it's weak, meaning if you're looking down, you only see one knuckle, like I see right now, you only see one knuckle, either the V is going towards your head or even towards the front shoulder anywhere that's going this way, it's a weak grip. So we need to make sure we see at least two knuckles in that left hand. That V is gonna come up towards that trail shoulder. Then the trail hand will just come and meet it and try to get into that position there. So those Vs match up. The other hand's not too far underneath. It's not, what we don't wanna see is too much over the top. And that's something I fought, fought in my golf swing a lot. Um, but the left hand's the main one, or the lead hand's the main one. We need to make sure the lead hand is in that neutral to maybe slightly strong position if you really want to get rid of the flips. So as we talked about in how to use your lead wrist video, which I'll post, I'll show you a picture up here and I'll leave a description down at the bottom. Uh, that's another area that controls what the lead, what that lead edge does. So if you're coming down and you're cupped at the top and you start dropping that club down, you can see because I've 
cupped here in the lead wrist, that lead edge is now wide open. Now, because of that move, you're gonna have to do something to make up for it, and it's gonna be slowing down the body and then releasing the hands with not much leg drive and push towards the target, which is something we really need to do to create more speed, control, and leaving that face moving through and staying more stable because the more you flip the more it's all I like to call it a windshield wiper effect the face is doing this and it's very hard to time out the the club face if the face is just constantly wanting to be open and then shut it gives you a very small window of time when that face is actually going to be aiming towards your target you're gonna hit it where you want to go second cause and effect is lead wrist so when you get to the top of the golf swing, we wanna make sure that lead wrist is nice and flat. You see a lot of guys on tour actually bowing it at this, at this top point of the swing. Um, we don't need to bow it, just need a nice and flat wrist position. From there, we're just gonna to try to maintain it. If you do get a little bit cupped, you need to practice making sure you uncup it on the way down. You can see that wrist nice and flat at that point, cupped and then flat. So that's a little bit harder move to do um, but if you're a guy, you're somebody who cups at the top, you're going to have to try to flatten coming down and feel that flat wrist as you drive through. Because when we get to impact, we need that wrist nice and flat as well. We don't want it to be open because that, that's when we hit shots to the right as well. We don't flip at it. So the third cause of why the club face might be getting into a weak position, that trail edge, is you're too far away from the golf ball or when you first make your transition down your hands are moving too far out in front of you you can see that lead edge when i'm in that position is now open you know even if i flatten out that wrist that lead edge is still open so if i drop the club down more here now the club is getting to be where we want it but if your hands fire out in front of you too much wide open and then you're going to end up flipping coming through and if you don't flip, then you're gonna see a lot of shots out to the right, or you're gonna see the right one, then you're gonna to try to fix it and you're gonna hit the left one. So let's watch me take a nice solid back swing with a nice flat wrist at the top. I got two knuckles showing, good neutral grip on the right hand. And then it makes it much easier to work through that golf ball. So let's talk about the mental side of it really quick. So the mental side of flipping is your body's like, I gotta stop and slow down just so I can make this hit. You're anticipating the hit and that's the big issue. If you ever videotape yourself taking practice swings with no golf ball, you probably don't see the flip in the swing as much because what you're doing is you're making a nice load, you get your transition, and then you're just swinging to a finished position because there's nothing in, in the way. When you're hitting a golf ball, you're getting a load, you got your transition, and then you're like, okay, now I gotta make a hit, and then get to a finish. And when you have that extra, that third thought, or the four thoughts in your head of, oh, I gotta make that hit, that's when our body starts putting on brakes, or anticipates the hit, and our lower body slows down, and our hands speed up, or the club speeds up, because our bodies you know, we put some type of break in our, in our swing and then we get a flip going through. So when we're hitting golf balls or playing on the golf course, we need to have the same thought process of taking a practice swing that we do when we're hitting the ball. So we need to eliminate that thought of the contact with the golf ball and just focus on getting to the finish. I guarantee you, practice enough, you won't need to think about the hit because the hit's just gonna happen. The golf ball's not going anywhere, your club's moving through, and as long as your body hasn't changed posture and positions, the hit's gonna happen. Trust the, the work you do in your footwork and the transition that we've, moves that we've been talking about and just work to the finish. 
it's much easier in the golf swing to think of where you want to get to than the process of getting there. So I don't want you to sit there and focus, oh, I gotta make the hit. I want you to think of, I gotta get to my finish. If you think of getting to the finish and forget about the hit and just let that happen, you're gonna make better contact, I promise you. So like I was saying, a dominant right hand golfer with a dominant left leg, meaning you jump typically off your left leg, golfer is probably gonna be slower in the hips going through, you know, typically when you see a golfer that is dominant in the right side, they say you jump off the right foot. Now this is gonna be like your Justin Thomas. Those guys are very aggressive with their footwork coming through the golf shot. And you'll see their heel all the way up off the ground. You might even see them raising up and almost jumping as they're coming into the golf ball because they're used to springing off that right side. Now, left side dominant jumper, the right side dominant hand, is going to be more active with their right side through the golf ball, but your spring is gonna be here, and you're not gonna be as comfortable pushing off and driving off that right side. So as a left side dominant jumper, right side dominant, arm or trail arm lead leg we need to be conscious about that because that's the same pattern that I have in my body and I have to be very self-conscious about that movement if I want to eliminate the flip in the hands and I want to make sure I get enough weight transferred to my lead side I need to make sure I'm driving off that right foot through the impact zone so one of the drills I really like to use is a feeling of you're gonna almost kick a ball. So if you're gonna get a ball passed in you, you're gonna kick it. You're gonna be driving towards that left side. So you can do it here, driving into that left side. So when we're doing this, it's gonna be a kick feeling. So I call this the kick drill. So I'm gonna have the feeling of I'm gonna kick the ball at the same time as that I'm gonna hit the ball. And you probably won't see it on the video as much, but for me, you can really have this sense and this feeling when you're doing it. Then I'm getting into it and I'm about to kick that ball right when I am making impact. And if you take a video like that side by side and compare them from your normal swing to the swing while you're doing it, you can see the difference and you'll feel the difference in the impact because the impact's gonna be more target side impact into the ground. You're gonna impact in front of the golf ball, which is what we wanna do so we can get good compression in our hits. So, simple feeling. Take it up to the top. Try to kick that ball at the same time you're gonna hit it. All right, so the next drill we're gonna do is a half swing back and we're gonna completely pause. So we're just gonna take it mid chest, about right there, and we're gonna pause. Hips are just slightly turned, and from here, we're gonna drive to finish. We don't need to do this with the ball right away, but I want you, when you do this, to go at it as hard as you can with your lower body. Just drive as hard as you can using the lower body. You're gonna take it to mid chest, you're set, and then take it all the way to the finish. Mid chest, all the way to finish. And when you do this, you're really gonna find, you know, you should feel it in your core. If you don't feel it in your core, you're using too much hands, too much shoulders. If you're feeling it in your core, you're doing it right, and that's when we're gonna eliminate the flip, and you're gonna drive more through the golf ball. At the same time, remember, flat lead wrist. Make sure you're seeing at least two knuckles in that lead hand. Very important. So you, if you get comfortable with it, you can get a golf ball out, and drive going through. That drill is excellent at teaching you 
to get the lower body to initiate first. And if you get the lower body to initiate first and you get the right sequencing, the hands are not gonna do what they normally do. And the stop body's not gonna stop and do that. Practice that drill often when you go to the driving range. You know, get warmed up, get comfortable, feel ready. And then once you, your, your body start, is warmed up, then start getting into that drill, stop and drive. Stop and drive and go to the finish. And that lower body will start activating. Your trail of foot will start pushing off a little bit more. And when we're driving, we don't want to drive towards the golf ball. We don't want to drive that way. We want to drive towards the target. So we're driving that way. So that lead knee is going straight towards the target. So I'm going to give you another simple drill. This one you can actually tell if you are flipping. So what we're going to do is you're going to take an alignment stick. You're going to put it at the back of that grip just like that. And you're just going to grip it normal just like that. And then you're going to put it up your lead side underneath your armpit. It should be sitting on your hip when we start. And we're just going to take some half swings. And if you flip, you'll know it because that alignment stick will hit you in that lead side. And we're not going to take, you know, we're not going to be hitting these far. We're just going to take little half swings back, through, and we're going to finish about there. What we don't want to feel is when we get into this position that that alignment stick is whacking us in the side. We want to be able to make it through and in front, and everything's turning with it. You know, this is a very good drill to practice your chipping with, so you don't get to flip it in the hands when you're chipping, but this is a very good drill to teach your body to keep rotating through that impact, and it'll also get that right side more active in driving through the golf ball. Golfers, thank you for watching today. Let's work on getting that lead edge a little bit more down towards the ground. And when we come through that golf ball, keep the body moving. Eliminate the breaks in the swing, eliminate the anticipation of the hit, and drive using that trail leg through opening up those hips and getting to a good finish. So the focus is good position at the top, make your transition, and drive to the finish. Try those drills I showed you. Do them in consecutive order. It will help you a lot, especially the one where you pause and focus on the, that setup number one. You know, setup number one, drive to the finish number two, and the club face will stay much square through impact. If you have any questions on this, drop me a comment down below. I'll, I like to answer any questions you guys put in the comment section. If you got anything out of this, hit the like or subscribe button down below as well. I put out videos once a week just to help you golfers get better. Remember, if your feet aren't working, your swing's not working. I'll catch you guys next time.